So, where will you go from here? <laughs> Jay was going to be here to support me, but he was split up. Oh, He's gone. Oh, there you go. Well, you'll be fine. We'll be gentle. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Oh hey Will, how you doing? It's Ro, Big Go Belt Media. Oh look, like I said, I'm pretty excited about this project. It's a lot involved with with this. Uh, a lot of hopes, especially with Kickstarter. I couldn't, oh, yeah. I couldn't get the Monarch tier. That's ten thousand. Oh yeah, that's too much. That's too much. I tried to put yeah. something. But what 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 made you, I guess, like with with Cradle, want to? What what was kind of the concept like behind like wanting to get this off the ground and just the the style that you guys chose for this particular story? Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So Cradle itself is influenced by a lot of anime. Uh, so there's a lot of just Japanese and Chinese and Korean influence in Cradle itself. So I've always, as an adaptation, seen it as kind of an anime style animation. So when Jay Oliva contacted us and he had the same vision for it as we did, we were really excited to make that. Okay. Yeah, it was always an animation to me. Yeah. yeah. That was going to be my question too. Is why animation? Right. Right. Good, I skipped ahead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm very excited to be able to, to read books. I was um, researching it and I'm like, oh my goodness, I have to read these. And I'm well, they're with me. Yes, they are. They are. So one of the big things uh, that I wanted to do with the series was I wanted them all to be have a lot of action, have a lot of motion, have a lot of forward momentum in the plot and be kind of kind of easy to read. So I didn't want them to be too long. So they're very compressed, they're very condensed, and they really keep it moving. It's really a, a fast roller coaster every installment. So I'm hoping you get through it pretty quick. And the audiobooks are only like 10 to 12 hours, most of them. So they're they're pretty they're pretty quick reads. That's awesome. Yeah. I can't wait. I'm really looking forward to it. I hope you enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> so how did the uh, like the actual series look like good? Uh, come about, like, when did you, like, like, how excited were you when you, like, got the project off the ground? I mean, that's your baby. Oh, so excited. Look. One of the things we started to do, Jay Oliva was, was contacting us to try and put like a pitch together, but then we heard that studios weren't really taking pitches yet, so we decided, okay, let's let's put what we can into it to make kind of a sizzle reel, which is sort of like a custom trailer we were doing, to use as a proof of concept to show people. So we had that fully animated project going, and we thought, hey, instead of going to the studios for funding, let's we've done Kickstarters in the past, let's try to go to the fans for Kickstarting. And when that started, to really become a reality when we started seeing the art come in for the sizzle reel which we were originally developing and we started to see even like my characters that I made up in in motion doing their their signature moves and stuff that really felt like a dream of mine had come to life it really was so cool to see characters I made up getting voiced by incredible people and now I'm hearing them and I'm hearing voices that are different than I'm in my head they're even better and seeing the character designs, it was really incredible. Did you have any like say in like your uh, character voice? Yes, uh, way more than I thought I would. I was totally ready to just hand that over, but Jay wanted to know what my how I heard the characters, and so I've been on the call with the voice actors every time. So I've been able to hear their takes and kind of give my input, and maybe sometimes I screwed up a line, so I get to change it on the fly. But yeah, I had a lot of influence over that. It's been really fun. Yeah. With the style of animation, I'm, I'm looking at you know with Yiren. I want to make sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Garrett, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I'm I'm kind of seeing resemblance to like a Fire Emblem style. Oh yeah. Uh, for that, did, how many different concepts did you think you guys went through before you finalized what you thought you were gonna pick for this? It's so funny because some characters and some uh, elements of the world took a lot of back and forth. But Yaren in particular, Jay had a really clear vision for her. So she's the the female lead of the series, and so he wanted to come in with the, for the whole style of the uh, of the series. We wanted to go with a real 90s anime style because that's something that influenced Jay a lot and influenced me a lot. So that's kind of the direction we were going from the beginning. And with Yaren, we went with a uh, with a swordswoman concept and she's got something that's reminiscent of like a kendo outfit. And in the books, she has like a magical belt and we turned that into something that goes over her shoulders so you can kind of see it in the different shots. It was a very cool adaptation process. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can jump right back into it. Yeah, yeah, go. Yeah. <laughs> so look, like I said, I mean, I, I know with Kickstarters, uh, you know, sometimes it goes through, sometimes it does but it seems like you're getting a lot of headway, you're getting a lot of support with, with oh, this. Yeah. Um, you know, do we have like an, a, a window? Are we talking like 2025? I know animation is like two years. So, so we, that's the that's the thing. So with our Kickstarter, 
all we could afford to make from the Kickstarter was a feature length animatic. So we're not going to be able to do the full animation for the whole feature length. Uh, but we're trying to leverage this, leverage the amazing fan support we've got into hopefully maybe fully animating the, the feature we have. Hopefully going to series. That would be doubly amazing. But whatever we can do to kind of advance the project. And we decided what we wanted to do with the money was tell as much of the story as we could. Because we thought that's what, that's what the fans would want and we would serve the fans best. But on this is fan money, let's put it into whatever we can get out there in front of the fans. So we are going to try to keep moving it forward one step at a time. Where is it going to go from here? I don't know. Uh, but I'm excited. And the animatic is supposed to be next year. So that's supposed to be coming out next year. But if we do end up able to get something fully animated, who knows? That would be super cool though. I, I feel like too, like it'd be a little bit concerning too, like, you know, you, you, the goal here of Kickstarter to get you, you know, get enough to get a, like a demo basically. Yeah. But if you get it picked up, I'm assuming the studio, does that give you less creative control over your project? You feel like you have to give over the reins a little bit more? All right, so I hesitate to give an official answer to that. Just in case. <laughs> oh, okay. But I will answer the question about my personal feeling toward that. And okay. my feeling is what we really want to do is make sure that the adaptation is something that fans are going to love and is something that is as faithful to the books as possible, not necessarily in the small details, but in the heart of the story and the characters. And our response has been, do we want a full series more than we want to tell the story in a way that honors the fans? No, we would much rather have a story that is that is consistent. So if it's something that requires us to give up complete creative control where we have no, no say over that, we wouldn't take that deal. So that's our that's my position right now. But of course, you know, I don't I'm not I don't have a deal. So <laughs> easy to say right now. The fans, 100 percent So the, that is that's always been something. I've never been married to the particular vision I had. And that's one of the things that when Jay and I started working together, he was asking me art style wise, how do you picture these things? How do you hear them? How do you see them? And of course I love answering those questions. But then he asked me, okay, so are you are you really tied to this or can we try to play with some things to see if you like it even better? And I went, I'm not married to, to anything except the core of the characters and the core of the story. So because that is what readers came to love about the books. So my feeling always about adaptations is the little minor stuff can change. That it has to change because you're telling in a different medium. But I want to make sure that anybody who sees this story knows it's cradle and feels it's cradle and it is the story they love, right? And so I'm not going to compromise anything there because of the readers, not because of my you know transcendent artistic vision. None of that. In other words, it's not going to be worth it to read the books or watch the animation so this was easy to look at. That's what that's what I hope. That's what I hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I see everybody, your team's got the, the Cradle shirts on. Have we already started talking about merchandising, you know, pens, stuff like that? Any any figures? Like that? <laughs> well, one of the, we really just kind of had these printed to, to come here. Right. So. <laughs> but, uh, but it is one of those things where we, we changed the symbol on the first book. Because on the first book, it's a real Chinese symbol that we put on, on the badge. And it's a Chinese symbol meaning empty space, basically. So we had done that initially to try and communicate to fans, this is a Chinese-inspired uh, work so that we could we could go you just come in with looking for the right expectations but as we got bigger and we became a bigger project we, we went I don't want to misrepresent anything to the audience like this is an authentic Chinese story because of course it isn't so because of that we went when we're going into visual adaptation we want to represent this is something more original and so we went with a new symbol and so if we're going with a new symbol we decided hey let's have shirts with the new symbol on it right so we decided to do that we will eventually end up selling these but I don't know when. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, there was. Yeah, already. So I wrote the script, the, the screenplay for the animatic. And I went I was going through my books and, and adapting the, the scenes as best I could. But there were a few things that just didn't fit. So there were a few things that were like, okay, so for one thing, we're trying to fit books one and two into the uh, into the 90 minute animatic, which of course is difficult. That's 45 minutes per book. Now they're not very long books, but that's still that's that's pretty compressed. So there were some things that I think were necessary in the book that I, even if I was rewriting the book now, I'd probably leave out. So there were some things where I got a chance to do kind of my director's cut version and, and leave some things on the cutting floor. And there were also some 
some things that, so for instance, in the books, I've talked about this a little bit on YouTube, there was a, there are some bully characters, characters who bully the main characters, but I've never liked how bullies are done in movies and TV shows. I felt like it's inauthentic. So I tried to make it a little more nuanced in the book. Well, in the animatic, we don't have enough time to do all that nuance, right? So, effectively, I tried to do as much as I could in the script, and then we had a voice actress come in, and she had such a great bully voice for the character that we had to kind of lean into it. So it was one of those things where it still works for the character, it still is coming from the culture, but it's a little different of a, a spin on it than there would be in the book. So, uh, let me say, wrap this up. Uh, yeah. gra graphic audio, like I said, I mean, they do a good job of that. I mean, yeah. like Audible, that's constantly in the car for me. Mm. All right. um, but yeah, like I said, good, good job. I can't wait for this to come out. Oh, appreciate thanks, it. man. <laughs> and thanks for backing. Yeah, no I appreciate problem. it. It's nice meeting you. Great to meet you all. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Will, right. okay, we're swapping. Leva, I think you guys might.